on Warwick. I, I listen to uh, I'm just going to check my car to see if it's charging because these are EV problems. Hashtag. I, think I EV, hope to never have that problem. EV problems. That's not true. Sign. I'm not conceptually opposed to electric cars, but I miss the uh, drama. The drama of, of, of having a of gasoline fire. <laughs> right. Okay. Hold on. I'm just making sure, and then we will start immediately. Amusers, 30 miles left. I can almost make it home. All right, welcome to the first ever episode of The Carmudgeon Show. And uh, this is the place where you go when you are miserable and hate everything and everyone because you don't have to be old to be grumpy. Um, Get off my lawn. Case in point, uh, this is Derek Tam Scott. Should you not know him, there's a hyphen in there because he's a very formal type person. Derek Tam hyphen Scott is how it's pronounced. Um, Derek. <laughs> Derek is a friend of mine. He also works here at ECME. Uh, we are, by the way, in a live shop where people are actually working and making noise in the background. It's going to happen a lot. There's a bunch of Italians here. There's a lot of cars. You're going to hear some stuff. Derek works here also. He works in sales and marketing and um, basically sells cars to people who don't want them. Is that what you do? I mean, nobody wants any old car, so I guess you kind of have to do some persuasion. Do you see what I mean about us being miserable and unhappy? I don't want that Ferrari 288 GTO, it sucks. Uh, Derek has a master's degree in civil engineering, which means he can be very civil, which is a, a talent that I do not possess. Um, and uh, what else do you want to say about yourself? By way of introduction, Mr. Tam hyphen Scott. Um, shitty old cars is where it's at. That's probably the most important thing to know. Uh, I think that, well, let's see, should we start with where what we do or don't have in common? Sure, I that'd mean, be fun. I think philosophically we're aligned on the topic of... I, I just wanted to do that. By the way, we have a bullshit button that either of us can hit at any time. I think we should have a fuck yeah button too, but anyway, for the moment, everything you say, I'm just going to be like... Okay, anyway, sorry. Uh -huh. Philosophically, we're aligned on what? Uh old cars or real cars. I think it's important to have real cars. Uh, and that's maybe why new cars could be a little bit lame sometimes. So I think we're gonna have a natural inclination to talk about old cars, uh, but we'll cover some new cars too. So when you say real cars, you mean things like not fake cars? Uh, not imaginary I mean cars, cars where the experience is not engineered by someone else for you. Like it was kind of just the car turned out the way it turned out because that was what got get the job done. Uh, as opposed to now where it's like sort of focus group and you know what sort of do you, you need a, a vacuum in the back of your minivan? Apparently. Yes, like, apparently you do. Uh, which was achieved through years of focus groups apparently. So. so what you're saying is basically what I do for a day job, which is testing new cars every day, sucks because all new cars suck. Fundamentally, yes. I, mean, I don't know why you exist. I, don't, I basically agree with that. I mean, look in my driveway, and there are not a lot of new cars other than things that I'm testing for a living. And the one thing I, will, I do find is that there are, what, 253 or something of the sort modern new cars that are on sale, and I'm interested in about 12 of them, personally. I mean, it doesn't matter what 12. I think. The number's like three for me. Okay. Well, I've driven them all, so, and there are surprises. Like, I just had a Dodge Durango 392, um, okay, which SRT I Durango. That. Right, it was stupid. It, you know, so there are occasional But I don't surprises. want one. I don't want anything. Uh, uh, I don't want to be there's here. There's stuff I want. What? Okay, so we'll get to those in a minute. What do you, hold on, what do you want? An E63 wagon, of course. Okay, everyone wants an E63 wagon. What else? It's a new car. A Giulia Quadrifoglio. Everyone wants that. A GT3 Touring. Everybody wants that. Finally, you put a manual in here. Uh, so it's mm, automatic. I don't know. You're losing credibility. The autos are always fun. Yeah, those are always fun. I think that's it. That's it? You want a GTI? I mean, uh, GTI is a solution to a problem that I don't have, which is like a practical car that works all the time and gets you places. I okay, don't need that. Fair enough. <laughs> that's the th I actually think the Tesla Model 3 is a solution to that exact problem. It's like the best Ooh. car. Like it's, you know, it does zero to 60 in three seconds silently so you can cut everyone off and they don't, like the police don't I hear don't you. I don't think I could ever electric car. All right, that's a future episode. But we're here this episode, so let's get to it. I'm going to set a timer uh, for something along the lines of like 20 minutes because we will discuss cars possibly forever. Um, and we have to break them up into individual episodes or people will revolt. Uh, how about 19 minutes left? I don't know. 
figure out. Somebody will stop slamming that door one of these days. Uh, director's having a cow. This is fun. He's going to be the biggest curmudgeon. Stop making that noise. Okay. Topic of discussion today. <clears throat> I'm on record as saying the V6 engine is not right by Jesus. And there's a reason for that. Because it's fundamentally flawed and it sucks. So V6 is an engineering solution that is created for packaging. Nobody ever, no engineer ever said, I want to put a V6 in this car. It's always like, well, I can't fit a straight six or a flat six is not commensurate with my brand and we can't fit it because flat sixes are really wide, straight sixes are really long. And so the only solution to get six cylinders in a, into a, a four cylinder space, basically, is to make a V6. That's um, true, except I think the first V6 was longitudinally mounted in a Lancia, and I don't think it was done for packaging reasons. I actually have no idea why it was done. It was probably done because Lancia was like, let's do weird shit, which is kind of what Lancia always Right. You're does. talking about the Italians. Italians are exempt from any actual... Well, so like the origin of the V6, why was it created? Who, who knows? I mean, there's probably a story there. Because a V8 didn't fit. Because the correct V orientation is a 12 or an 8. Nobody ever... Okay, let's put it this way. In today's modern cars, V6s are a packaging solution, right? For sure. So if you think about the proper layout for a V6 to get it balanced, you'd need 120 degrees. So the two, the two banks would be splayed out. At a, so this is 90. I can't bend that far. 120 degrees out. We know. So then... Yes. Anyway, so V6s, in order to be balanced, have to be 120 degrees. That doesn't fit width-wise for the same reason that a flat six doesn't fit in most cars. So engineers have had to do either a 60 degree, which is half of 120, which means it's mostly balanced, or they base the V6s off of the V8, which is at 90 degrees, and then that creates all kinds of problems. 90 degree V8s need to have um, either offset crank pins or huge counterweights. V6s. Uh, you said V8. Yeah. I'm just going to keep hitting the bullshit. Yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, 90 degree engines have to have balance shafts. 60s have to have flying weights. I mean, they have, they have all sort of inherent problems. Plus, unlike a straight six, you have two cylinder heads. So twice the complexity, twice the cams, twice of all the other bullshit. Um, twice the head gaskets to blow and valve covers to go. And then you have, no matter what you do, you have vibration issues with cars. Um, and V6's mechanical noise always sounds like shit because internally the engine is trying to rip itself apart. Um, Almost always. Okay, so that's why we're going to go for this. Here's the problem that I have with the V6. Not only is it not right by Jesus, so I should hate it. There's one that I really, 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 really love, and another one that I just learned that I really, really love, and I kind of feel guilty about that. How is that? Uh, is that a struggle for you, Jason? That yeah, guilt? It's, it's cognitive dissonance. I know I should hate something. Like, I know that I hate, should hate Reese's peanut butter cups because they're terrible for me, but they're fucking delicious. So I have this dissonance as I'm shoveling them down my throat. Like, I really should stop <coughs> eating this. I should, <coughs> shouldn't have that. No, but my point is, there is a V6 that has existed for quite some time um, that defies the V6-ness of all the V6s, which is the Alpha Busso motor. Mm -hmm. And I know you have some strong feelings on this. I do have strong feelings. Uh, I've owned two Busso engined cars, uh, and they both sucked for different reasons. Uh, the cars or the engines? The cars. Okay. So the engines were superb. You buy the car for the engine. Right. Which is true, actually, for most Italian cars. Not most, but I think... Mm. Hmm. Italians always get engines right. Like... Re always hold on. No, no, no. I'm, so this is a perspective that is anchored in probably 1980. Okay. Uh... But it used to be that you bought an Italian car for the engine, you bought a British car for the chassis, and then they would, it would have some amazing chassis, and then they'd put like a tractor engine in yeah. it. Like this is sure. like Austin, was, was kind of the Austin Healy's and Triumphs and stuff like that. I should also say he's got taste in cars like a 94-year-old old man, which is why he said, get off my lawn. Yeah, it's not just cars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... All right, so the Busso engine, by the way, is the Alfa Romeo V6 engine that launched in, like, 1979 Nine, I think. It was right. in the Say, which was a big sedan right. with triple Delorto carburetors, and it was kind of terrible. Okay. Uh, and then they put Bosch Matronic on it, and then it ended up in the GTB6 and the Milano, known as the 75 everywhere else in the world, one, yeah. except for here. And then in the 164, the 164. transversely in front-wheel drive form. Yes. And then in a bunch of other stuff, and it started out as a 2.5 was the biggest initial displacement. Correct. There was a 2-liter version. 
There was with the turbo on it later on. Yes, there was that's a right. three liter and then a three two with four cam. There was four cam, three liter, and a four cam. Yes, you could get a, t a two cam or four cam three liter. And it sounds like sex. It is. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just like the best sounding car. I no, 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 no. Um, here's the thing about the, about V6s though. Intake and exhaust can sound really good. It's the mechanical noise that sounds like shit. So we all know that Infinity VQ, oh, which sounds exactly like an R32 Volkswagen, which is a VR6, which is not a V6 because it only has one cylinder head. But the exhaust can sound really good, but the Busso sounds good all the time. Like everything, right? Yeah, I mean, I prefer, this is controversial, I prefer listening to it to a 60s Ferrari V12, except for the carburetor noises. Uh, when it's got the right exhaust. It's sensitive to exhaust. When they're the like, Busso is. The Busso yeah. is. I mean, everything is. I I've suppose. never, I've, but I've never heard a, a Busso sound bad. You're not going to talk about my GT V6? <laughs> that car is terrible. That, that car, I'm so, I should apologize to you. I'm very sorry, but I'm going to rip your old car to shreds. That was the worst driving fucking Alfa Romeo I've ever driven. Possibly the worst driving modified car I've ever driven, period. And the, but the engine actually sounded great. And we have videos of it. We can probably throw a video in here or something afterwards. But Oh, yes. There, there's the one video that we took on a rally up a hill. We'll pause for that. <laughs> That sounded amazing. And then you had a 164. Which sounded better. Which sounded better. But that was the same engine, right? It's a three, so liter? It's a three liter versus the one in my uh, GTV6 was, was two and a half, five. which was why it was so slow. But usually the two and a half sound sound better. But the weird thing about the, the Busso is that I don't, I don't know what it is about that engine. Actually, mechanically, it sounds really good. So it's not, I mean, the videos, it's mostly the exhaust that we hear. Um, but the car sounds really good. So let's think about this. What V6 has actually sounded good since the dawn of time? Uh, anything Italian. So Lancia V6s. The I original, that's the first V6 ever, like Lancia Aurelia B20, B24, it sound like? Flaminia. It sounds like a Busso, but a little bit more old and not quite as good. But it sounds, but it sounds good. So I've never heard one. So like, do they rev? Do they do? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know. They're like 60 years old, so I don't usually rev the snot out of them when I drive them. But right. I like the way they sound. And it, it's not so different from a, a Ferrari 2.4 or two liter V6. See, that's the other thing. So everyone always immediately says Ferrari Dino V6. Um, sounds great, and I've heard, I've seen YouTube videos of them, but I've never actually been in one or heard one in person. At they sound full, good. Full it, at, at idle, they always sound like Volkswagens where they're about to sort of like die. Like they just sound crappy at idle, uh, and you're like, this sounds miserable. This is not going to be a good experience. And then you start to beat on it, and it sounds actually quite good. Okay, better than a Busso? No. No. Okay. So but you have, genuinely good. So you have like some Lancia V6 that no one's ever heard before. And then you had, <laughs> you have the Ferrari Dino V6 from the 70s. Busso. Yes, which is also used in Lancia Stratos and the Fiat Dino. Okay. And then you have Busso V6 from the seven, late 70s into the 80s and the early 90s. Correct. I'm not counting Volkswagen's VR6. That sounds unbelievable, but it's not a V6. Um, that's, that's it until we get to... For me, uh, there's uh, one V6 that always sounded good was, um, the VQs sound real. The problem with the VQ, if you've ever driven anything with that Nissan V6 in it, and you've driven a million Camry, uh, Altimas and Muranos and all kinds of other shit, is at the exhaust note sounded amazing. But inside the car, I think I wrote when the G37 came out that I couldn't believe the car sounded like Celine Dion on the outside, but Roseanne Barr on the inside. You get this, whoa! on the out, like unbelievable exhaust outside the car and inside it honestly sounded like marbles in a drain disposal. They were terrible. So I'm disqualifying the VQ. Um, the it always sounds synthetic to me, the VQ. Like whenever yeah. I hear it, I can recognize it and you're like, oh, it must be a 350 it, or a three, 370 or, something. Yeah. yeah, and it was tuned. It was just exhaust resonance to me, tuning. But then you have the uh, Alpha, the current Alpha Julia Quadrifoglio actually sounds really good. Um, it sounds like a straight six. Didn't you previously describe that as the sound of two smart cars having an argument? Did I? 
you did. I mean, I say things all the time that I have no recollection of. I say horrible, horrible things. No, I mean that. But the thing is, when you when you listen to that, if you listen to a video clip of like a Julia QV and an M3. Um, oh well. There, but no, no, no. But I mean, the current M3, the F8, F80, they don't sound much different. That Julia actually sounds like a straight six, and it's because they don't. It's the way the exhaust is routed. It doesn't ever come alive and scream at high revs. You just get an interference. If they're just bah. Like 7,000 RPM is not a scream. It's just kind of a which louder noise. Which it is in a um, Busso. Which it is in a Busso. Busso scream. And the other one that screams, and you're going to fucking punch me, Camry V6. Toyota's V6 is the best V6 in the world. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's a 60-degree V6, so it doesn't need balance shafts. So it's not going to actually fly apart if anything part fails. Um, and it is a very big bore short stroke motor, so it's over square. Um, so it loves to rev, it's smooth as silk. I will admit that I drove a 2011 Evora with an exhaust system on it, okay. which is that engine, and I was like, I, I like this and I would own this car, which to me is, like sound is very important. I, if it, I don't like the way a car sounds, then I either don't buy it, well, no, that's not true. Then I, then I sell it immediately, <laughs> which is <laughs> I what buy I did it, with I my 968. Uh, I but no, that, that Avora V6 is unbelievable. We just, I just finished up Road & Track's Performance Car of the Year, and we had 11 cars there, um, including a flat plane V8. We had a McLaren there. We had a, um, a Lamborghini Huracan Evo V10, and it's an odd fire V10. It sounds amazing. Um, a lot of incredible sounding cars, new Corvette, and the best sounding of the bunch was the Lamborghini. But right, <laughs> right below it was the Avora. And so the Avora GT in the US for this year gets um, uh, a, a, a special exhaust. It's not in canal. Um, I think it's titaninium, which mm. in English is titanium, or in American it's titanium. Um, and honestly, it sounds, it was more exotic and higher pitched than anything else there, and one of the best sounding engines How I've ever How did they heard. do that? They probably put equal length headers on it and just made sure that there was a lot of noise coming through. Because again, a V6 and a straight six actually are no different really in terms of firing order. They sound um, so different they usually sound very different. though. It's exhaust routing. You gotta think Evora's transverse. So the exhaust is gonna come out the back, the muffler is gonna be at the back. One bank of cylinders is going to be closer to the exhaust pipe than the other. So even if the runners are the same length on one side, on the front side, the, the runners on the back are gonna be different. This is my hypothesis about the, the front wheel drive Busos, because I think they sound better than the longitudinal ones, and it may be because of that exact could be. It could be that they tuned it for you know, high rev resonances and stuff like that. Um, so I really, but I really have a problem with the fact that I just put a couple hundred miles on, a, on an Evora, and I'm like, this is amazing, this thing, and it's supercharged, for, so it's pissed off and angry sounding. Um, and it sounded amazing in the car, so the mechanical noise you hear is okay, and I think that's because it's a short stroke 60. But I have a really big problem with the fact that like, I don't do engines in V configurations, because why have two heads when you can have one? Um, it's just double the fucking <laughs> what work. What about V12? That gets exempted from everything. That's what I thought. But I've, I've never, I mean, have you owned anything with a V12? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, not all of us, those of us without hyphens in our names, don't own V hyphen 12s either. It was, um, let's see, it was an accidental eBay purchase for $5,500. What was? The Daimler Double Six. Oh, the V12. I, I was thinking about another one. Oh. Yeah, so this nice. idiot bought a, <laughs> no, actually you did fine on that, bought a Jaguar V12, so an XJ12 badged as a Daimler. So yes. Daimler Double Six. That's right. How was that? The car? Yeah. Well, the engine, really. It's two V6s, right? Yeah, it was two V6s. like very smooth. You sort of couldn't tell it was there. Uh, which is what it should be in a luxury sedan, but it was not that sort of like visceral V12 experience. It was just kind of like... I would argue that most V12 experiences are not visceral experiences. Like, I have a big issue. I just drove a 550 Marinello for the first time. Stick. Okay, yeah, that's a sleepy... It's and it's kind of another a sleepy, sleepy V12. Yeah. And I, I think V12s, in, very much like V6s, don't actually sound like much unless you get the exhaust tuned correctly. Yeah, and then you end up with something like a Ferrari 512. Nine, nine. A 599 GTO. Or, I mean. Some wailing insane. Yeah. What's your I mean, I think modern Ferraris like F12s and FFs, those sound much better even yeah. than, than like a 550. Yeah, the 550 sounded like nothing. I mean, in all honesty, I hit the I limiter agree. at 7,500 RPM. I, I feel bad for the owner of the car. I mean, it was warmed up and all, but I didn't mean to hit the limiter. I just wasn't looking, and it was yeah. pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling, and I had no idea it was seven grand. 
I mean, I kind of thought it was like five. Was waiting oh, what for about an up. Aston Martin V12? Aston's V12 sounds really good. The V12S sounds really good. The, um, the S has got variable valve timing, so it's much more awake at high revs. Um, and that sounds good, but I really don't think, interestingly enough, I don't think most V12s sound as good as the straight sixes they're based on. That's true. Um, I mean, straight six, in my opinion, is the best noise to listen to. I'm, I gave the bullshit alert to buy myself some time to think about this. Mm. Straight mm -hmm. sixes are the best sounding ever. Okay. Have you been in a modern V8 Corvette? No. Okay. Oh, I drove a ZR1. Okay. Do you hear that? I remember hearing it. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember like it bouncing off walls and like blowing your eardrums out? And I didn't like, do that. I didn't yeah. have that experience. They sound really, really good. So, but it's like the coarse, like sort of American V8 noise. Like mm -hmm. I like that noise, but it's not my favorite. I like the music of a straight six. What about the music of a flat six? Mm, I prefer straight sixes. To listen to. Okay. Whose straight six is the best? What's the best sounding straight six? If you say S54, I'm going to throw this fucking no, 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 definitely not. I hate the way S54 sound, actually. Good. Because it I like, like the way S52 sound. I think S52 sound much better than S54s. M50 B32 is the US one? Even in the US form. Or like, a, I mean, any of the motorsports motors. Uh, or like 240Zs, but when they're like big motors. Like Rebello? three liters. Rebello th I had a yeah. Rebello three liter and a 240Z, and that was magic. That is honestly, uh, so Rebello, Steve Rebello, Steve Rebello? Steve. Steve. Dave. Dave. Whatever. There's a dude named Rebello who made, who's the, the Z car straight six guy. Um, and I've driven a couple of Rebello engined uh, 240Zs. Like one was a three liter or three two or three something. It was some big thing. And in, in addition to the fact that it was like 310 horsepower in a 2,500 pound car, that was one of the best sounds I've ever heard in yeah. any car ever. And that's their like crappy single overhead cam motor because concurrently they were making the twin cam motor, which ended up in the Z432. Right, the S20. And the Hakoska GTR, S20, exactly. Right. That, so the, S, the S20, which is a Prince motor, which is a Prince racing motor that Nissan took when they bought, um, they, they bought uh, Prince, wound up as the first GTR motor, and that is a twin cam. So the Z432 meant it was a Z car, four valves per cylinder, three carburetors, two camshafts is what that stood for. And that made, it was 150 horsepower. From two liters. Uh, from two liters, revved to 7,500. Uh, and we're talking 1967, somewhere around later. Then? Later, 70. I think 70 was the street car, the production car. That is another one that sounds amazing. Think of no a, power. No power until 5,000. Yeah. From 5,000 to 7,000, it's fucking cocaine and wasabi, is what I said in the story <laughs> on that car. Really. All right, so now tell me what V6s sound nearly as good. We have to end this whole thing on a positive note. I mean, the <laughs> I'm giving my own bullshit. I just, the answer is always Busso for noises. I, I still don't oh think I've God. ever owned a car that sounds as good as the 164. It was a terrible car in every respect, except for the way it uh, sounded. And I would pay, I mean, it wasn't very expensive, fortunately. So I, I would say that I, whatever I paid to experience that car was just to listen to it for 1,300 miles before I sold it at a loss. Um, <laughs> But it was worth it. Like, I, I, I think that that car, I forgave all the crappy aspects of it. I mean, I didn't forgive it enough to keep it. Uh, yeah, but, it's hardly much of a forgiveness. But I genuinely... Well, I hate you, so I'm going to sell you. But I forgive your terribleness because of how you sounded. Yeah. That was basically the experience of owning that car for me. Okay. Is there anything with a V6 in it other than a Vora that's interesting at all acoustically? Let's think about this. I mean, you just talked about the Julia. To the Julia, oh, yeah. Julia's up there. Um, I just think of like, no one, it's, Ferrari's coming out with a V6 car, right? It's, it's, it's happening, so I hear. Um, and I just keep thinking like, wow, if it's got the Julia's exhaust routing, it's just gonna be a little bit flat and a little bit, like it sounds good for a V6, but if they, they're gonna have to do what Lotus did on that Evora. And mm -hmm. at the end of this thing, we'll, we'll like link to a, the, that hill climb video of the Evora with that exhaust on it, it's fucking absurd. It's so nuts, it's so nasty, it's so loud. Um, but you know, Ferrari comes out with a V6, what do you think? It better sound damn good. Although I don't like listening to Ferrari flat plane V8s, which I know makes me a heathen, uh, but I don't like listening to Ferrari flat plane V8s. I never have for decades. 
there's not one that I actually like listening to, whether it's a carbureted 308 or a 458. I thought you were going to go for the no, bullshit. No, I'm not throwing water on your face. <coughs> well, I think that's a perfect way to end. So now you know. So I am sitting here saying V6s are not right by Jesus, but I like a couple of them. And this old man is like, I don't like Ferrari V8s. And I think that's the perfect way to introduce Derek Tam hyphen Scott to the audience. You think I'm a miserable fuck? <coughs> we'll pick up this conversation shortly on the, on the topic of the flat plane V8. Yeah, I, I think it sounds good in Shelby. Uh, I just don't like the way they sound. In the Mustang Ferraris. Shelby GT350R? Yes, and the thing? 350 yeah. yeah, because it doesn't sound like a flat plane. Yes, Because exactly. it's got unequal length headers. Exactly. All right, that's it. I'm calling bullshit on this episode.